Hello, hello, good evening everyone, good evening and welcome. So, um, here we are once again, ready for a new lesson. For this time, we are going to be covering the last um, lesson of the week. By the way, I have to say, Jorge, your background looks amazing. Your background looks looks very good. So I, I take a look at every, at every day and the different backgrounds that you use. And tonight, yours is pretty, pretty cool. All right. So um, as I was saying, this evening, we're going to have to cover the last um, class of this week. We are going to, well, be having a few things, actually, for tonight. We're going to be talking about witches, which was, well, no, sorry, sorry, wishes. Wishes which was the topic we was um, kind of like left hanging last night. We are also going to be um, doing a little bit of a reading practice. Um, this is most likely going to take a, a, a big bunch of our um, practice for tonight. We're going to see. We're going to see about that. Um, but yeah, it's probably going to take a lot of the practice because I want to give each and every one of you guys the opportunity to read and, uh, well, Reading is important in English and basically in every language. Last night I was telling you about um, like how you can, you know, kind of work around the fact or the idea of learning new vocabulary. But tonight I want to provide you guys with the opportunity to actually get to, um, you know, expose yourself to vocabulary. And this is, might be a way for you to get more vocabulary in the future. So yeah, we're going to do that practice. That's going to be part of the class. Then another thing is that uh, we are also hoping to, well, it's probably not going to happen. But if we, if we have the time, we're going to be um, talking about simple past versus pre uh, present uh, perfect, which, well, are topics that for some people, they seem to be similar. But honestly, they are not. Okay, they are very far from being similar because they are used in different situations. Um, there are, of course, a few things that are, I mean, that they have in common, but in the end, in the long run, they're not going to be the same. So um, that's the idea for this evening. Before we get to that, of course, we are going to um, be doing this, the first practice, which is, um, well, the question for the night. And uh, well, for tonight, I was thinking about switching a little bit the regular because when we get to this point, the last class of the week, uh, normally what happens is that I go ahead and inquire, you know, about um, what may be your future plans. But this time around, I think we're going to have a little bit of a switch. We're probably not going to go that route. Uh, we are going to be talking about something more personal because there's no, not necessarily a need, you know, to to always ask about um, the plans. So for tonight, we are going to be talking about music. And uh, I would like to hear what is your favorite song? Who is your favorite artist? Um, whichever of those you guys want to share, because sometimes I ask you straight up, like, what is your favorite song? But um, some people, they just say that they don't really have a favorite, like music is so good that they don't really have a favorite. But maybe you have a favorite art artist, or maybe, you have a favorite band, or maybe you have a favorite rhythm, you know, a, a favorite um, kind of music. So, yeah, I want to hear about your preferences in music and, um, of course, how important it might be for you. So, you can, of course, only share what is your favorite song. There is no problem if you do that. You can share what is your favorite um, artist or band or, or singer. or you can share what is your favorite rhythm of music. So that is basically going to be the topic. We're going to be talking about music. You choose which one you want to share. If you want to share your favorite music, sorry, your favorite song, your favorite um, artist, or your favorite rhythm. So we are going to get started. And I think that tonight, the person who is going to kick it up is going to be um, actually Melissa, Melissa Linares. So tell me. What is your favorite song, artist, or rhythm in terms of music? Uh, my favorite song in, in this time is Antihero from Taylor Swift. Uh, I like Taylor Swift and every uh, 
discografía con uh, well we can oh. say album if we're talking only about one album or discography if we're talking about like all the music that she has oh yes i like all the music that, that she, she has that she has okay i haven't listened to the last album uh honestly i remember i used to not follow but kind of enjoy taylor swift um but in the last few months i don't know why i haven't really been exposing myself to a lot of the new music that is coming out um but you know maybe one day i will get to listen to it so very good thank you very much for sharing all right um how about we hear now from let me see Osmin, how about you, Osmin? What is your favorite song, artist, or rhythm? Hello, teacher. Uh, Hello there. I don't, I don't have a, a favorite music. I, I like uh, all, all kinds, all kinds mm -hmm. music. I hear all, all kinds of music. And, I don't have uh, uh, artist or professor artist. Uh, All right. You know, it's something that happens. I, I told you, that's the reason why I don't necessarily ask only for one song because, yeah, sometimes like we enjoy music so much that we don't necessarily have one specific, you know. Um, and it happens, for example, in my case, um, in the last couple of days, I don't know why, I have been listening to Vivaldi, which is, you know, part of, like, classics. Um, I also listen to Il Bolo, which is in, in Italian, normally. Um, what else has been part of my last few days? I think some... one. Re sorry. Yeah, One Republic. Uh-huh. Simple Plan. Things like those. In the last couple of days, I have been all over the place. And that is why, if you ask me right now, what is your favorite song? I think it will be very difficult for me to answer straight up. Probably I will have to go back to I'm Yours, you know, this song by Jason Brass. So probably that will be my answer right now. But um, yeah, music is tricky sometimes. And I totally understand those. I mean, the fact that you don't have a favorite, um, not right now, but, you know, in general, like you don't have a favorite. So good. Very good. Thank you much. Thank you very much for sharing. All right. Uh, moving on, we're going to hear from... Uh, Let's see, Alexa, how about you? What is your favorite song, artist, or rhythm? Well, actually, I mostly listen to music in English. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes in Spanish, I don't know, sometimes. But lately, I do a lot with Japanese in Korean songs. So, I'm very mixed up. I mean, I listen Bon Jovi, Coldplay. <laughs> I listen Red Velvet, Amy, uh, Young. I have a lot of things. And actually, I can choose one favorite song, but the song that actually I must enjoy a lot is Psycho by Red Velvet. Oh, okay. That is a very good one. All right. Very, very good. Good. Yeah, I um have heard about the group. In my case, one group that I um love to listen in the last few weeks is XG. I don't know if you know that one. Yeah, I love um listening. I to... get stuck with that song. Yeah, <laughs> oh I love mouth. listening to Kokona. It's like she's just a boss. So yeah, I mean, that is one of the groups that I like, but it's like. As I said, I'm all over the place. Like, I, I don't know. I would listen to, what, Stray Kids, BTS, anything. Anything that comes my way. I Sometimes it's funny because sometimes I have a playlist that is only about um, anime, in, anime intros. So I will play that playlist sometimes. Like, when you get in, in my car, I will be listening to that. And it happens to my girlfriend sometimes. that she, I mean, she gets in the car and she's like, what are you listening to today? And it's just like, oh, it's just anime intros, you know, something probably from Naruto, Chingeki, or I don't know, Kimetsu, whatever that comes my way. Um, so yeah, or in other days, I will be listening to salsa. In other days, I might be listening to reggaeton. In other days, I might be listening to what, electronic music, go back to Avicii and things like those. So 
you know, music is just like that. Music is a special and there's basically one kind of music for everyone. Something that I want to start listening to and it's something that I don't know if you guys have ever had an experience with it is French rap. I don't know if you guys have ever listened to French rap, but French rap sounds so, I don't know, in intricate, like so tricky, honestly. It sounds like a tongue twister. And uh, I want to learn French. It's something that I want to do. It's like one of my, my desires at the moment. Um, so yeah, I want to start listening to French rap. Hopefully, I'm not going to get disappointed on myself, but you know, it's just part of, of what it is. All right, very good. Moving on. Uh, let's hear from Jorge. How about you? What is your favorite song, artist, or rhythm? Mm, I don't have any singer feature, but I love the romantic music and not, um, be, me, not um, better the language. All right. So romantic music in general. See, yes. So it means it means that you will listen, for example, to Camila at the same time that you may listen to Ed Sheeran. Yes. All right. Very good. Very good. Yeah, last no, it was not last night. It was actually yesterday. While I was at work, I remembered that I used to love Ed Sheeran. I had forgotten about him. And um I was listening, as I said, I was listening to Bocelli, and out of a sudden I was like, I remember there was a song that I used to love that had Italian in it. And it's actually one version of the song um, Perfect, which is with um, Andrea, forgot the last name of the guy, but it's one version that has, you know, uh, like a featuring in Italian. And I play that song again, and I think I might be going back to listening uh, Ed Sheeran in, for a few weeks now. So, yeah, something that happens. All right. Uh, next one. Let's see if we can get an opinion from Lisbeth. How about you, Lisbeth? What is your favorite song, artist, or rhythm? Um, I don't have a favorite song, but I'm a big fan of Taylor Swift, and I really got excited when Melissa mentioned her. <laughs> so I love her. I'm a really big fan. And I also love K-pop, the one that you mentioned before. Mm -hmm. uh, it's G, Red Velvet. No, I love them. Okay, good. Very good. Yeah, I mean, XG is relatively new, I think, but uh, I hope that they get more music out because, yeah, I feel like they're going to kill it. Um, you know, I remember, I mean, my, my, my girlfriend and my uh, sister, they are both huge fans of BTS. And uh, I mean, they have a lot of merch from, from them, mostly my girlfriend. But I remember, t I remember me telling them that now I kind of understood them and I was probably going to start collecting things by XG because I don't know why I just felt like cold, you know, for, by that group. And yeah, I enjoy listening to them a lot. And, and as I said, I mean, it's something that many people, maybe they're not ready to accept it, but K-pop is great like if you pay attention to the lyrics and in, if you listen to the different rhythm that's, rhythms that they include is just great um because well something to be honest something that i think also calls me a lot when it comes to k-pop is the fact that they include english so singers that include english in their lyrics are the ones that are going to call me even more um that is why for example from bts my favorite is rap monster because i can understand him better in the songs like there are parts of the song that I understand. Uh, apart from, I don't know, if, for example, I will listen to Gene. He's like, yeah, he sounds nice, but I don't understand to what he's saying. But RM, I do. So, you know, there's like the difference that, ha that, that takes place. But all right, moving on. Uh, let's hear maybe now. Oh, sorry, Lisbeth, what were you going to say? I was to ask you who is your bias from XG? Uh, Kokona. Yeah. Same. Yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. it's Kokona. I just love her. In, in my YouTube, ahorita creo que no, ahorita creo que se llenó de nuevo ya de, de cosas de, de trabajo, pero hubo un tiempo que mi feed de YouTube era solo así como un montón de edits y cosas así de, de Kokona. So yeah, that used to happen, you know, it, it happened to me. I think it was like a, two months ago, something like that. So yeah. All right, moving on then. Uh, next one up, I think it's going to be Ruth. How about you, Ruth? 
what would be your favorite in terms of um uh your favorite song or artist or rhythm hi everyone good evening good evening uh, uh, that's question it's so difficult because i love the music everything uh every kind of music i love it and uh afrobeats openings endings <laughs> Uh, Naruto soundtracks. Yeah. Uh, Jujutsu Kaisen soundtracks. <laughs> I haven't uh, watched Jujutsu. That's why I cannot talk about them. But I that's one of my <laughs> pendings. That's one of my pendings. Me acabo de acordar que tengo que pedir la cuenta de Crunchy ahorita. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> uh, but uh, I love one song mm -hmm. because it's so uh inspiradora uh inspiring inspiring uh, name is uh a stand up uh, i forget the the singer but it's so beautiful and uh i like sing it because i love sing and dance. <laughs> okay. And for that reason, I don't have a, a favorite kind of music or a, a favorite uh, singer or because I love everything: uh, reggaeton, salsa, merengue, uh, rock, okay. uh, 80, Very good. <laughs> is it stand up or is it stand by me? No, it's stand, it's stand up. Stand up. Okay, because yeah. the only ones that I see here on Spotify are one by Cynthia Eribo and another one by One Direction. No, uh, a woman, I think, uh, is a woman. So it might be this one by Cynthia Eribo? Probably. Uh, no. I think no. No, probably not. No, it doesn't sound like it will be, yeah, one of those. It's a, a, a nigga, it's a nigga woman. <laughs> it's black. It's a black woman. It's a woman. <laughs> okay, so I think, okay, I'm going to show you this. I hope, is, I hope. Ah, is... yeah, yeah. Her name yeah. is Cynthia Erivo. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cynthia Erivo. Okay. So I have it right there. That's I'm so... going to listen to the song right after the class. Okay, very That's good. Pretty. Very, very good. <laughs> It's a black woman. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right, no problem. No, we're learning, we're learning. So you're okay. All right, uh, next person. We just gonna, it's going to be the last one. And I think I would like to hear from, let me see, Mayra Guevara. How about you, Mayra? What is your favorite song, artist, or rhythm? Um, uh, my favorite um, is um, a group of common services. Group? group? Group, yeah. Okay. Is uh, the Bastard Boy. Ooh, okay. Very good. Very, very good. So, yeah, that's also part of my radar. So, nice. Very, very good. Sounds, you know, like um, something great. Yeah, Fast Backstreet Boys. They used to be, um, they are basically the One Direction of the 80s. So great. Very, very nice. Okay. So uh, now that we have covered such topic, thank you very much, guys, for sharing that. And uh, we're going to move into, well, the work for this, for this uh, evening. We have this pending over here, which is the topic related to wishes. Last night, I was telling you about, um, well, a little bit of the structure, like how are we going to build up sentences um, when we want to express witches, which is can be about anything. Uh, like you can, for example, just wish that it was cooler right now, let's say. I wish it was cooler. I wish uh, it was hotter. Depending on what your mood is, um, you can have different wishes. Let's say that, for example, you have this desire for an ice cream. So you may say, I wish I could have ice cream right now. So, you know, different wishes come from different necessities. So wishes are not necessarily only about important things in life, because here, for example, all the topics you can see are things that are 
relatively important and uh, make you feel like you're obligated to use wishes only for important things, but nah, you can use them basically for, for anything. Like, um, like what? I can say, I wish the new season of um, Kimetsu no Yaiba was already out, for, just for, as an example. So yeah, it's just a wish, it's just a desire, but it's not something that is going to you know, be that relevant for anyone else. Uh, but yeah, so here, uh, as also I mentioned last night, after you use the wish, um, you have to use a past tense. So if, for example, here you take a look, in this example we have, I wish I didn't, okay? So I, we don't say I wish I don't, or we don't say I wish I won't, if it was like in the future, we have to use it from the past, or we have to mention the past. Um, last night I read all these examples, but this one's about life is difficult. I was explaining, I remember how we are allowed to use it where, when we are talking about wishes, when we are mentioning the first person, which means I, you know, the, the first person, when we talk about that, we are allowed to use, I wish, I, I wish it were, I wish I were, I wish you were even, but in that case, when you use, I wish you were, um, it's actually well, correct in all the senses because you were is the right way of saying it to the second person. But um, the thing is that you are allowed to use it like this, okay? When you have the first person, you are allowed to use this where thing over here. Um, now, next one, next example is, I wish it weren't so difficult. So we're talking about life. Uh, we have these two ways of saying it. I wish it was easier, which is in a positive way. We are also, you know, having that desire for life to be easier. Or we also can say, I wish it weren't so difficult. So saying something negative that will, in the end, transcribe into something positive because that is the desire that we have. We wish that life wasn't so difficult. Um, so the next one is, my parents won't stop worrying about me. Something that uh, many people see as um childish because it can be interpreted as childish actually the fact that you don't want your parents to worry about you because well that is something normal i think like uh family is of course going to worry about the things you do and about uh well your well-being so it's not something you know that, that you should wish it will stop of course if it's not something toxic because if it is toxic well then you might have the upper hand on that desire. But we have the example. I wish my, I, I wish my parents, uh, sorry, I wish they would stop um, worrying about me. So it's just a simple wish, a simple desire. As I said, you can um, use this structure with basically any situation. It doesn't have to be about something as important. Um, let's say that you want to, meet a famous person you can say that like i wish i um was i wish i met what um jim carrey for example i wish i met robert downey jr i wish i met um barack obama i don't know anyone who might be famous it's just an opinion just a desire that you have um let's say that um in terms of food you have this um desire of having something specific so you can say i wish i had a pizza here i wish i don't know i wish i had um a what a hot dog so anything that you might happen to desire in the case of ruth maybe she would wish she had some mushroom pupusas with her so you know that's just a, a wish a desire that she will have now for all those wishes for all those desires for all those um I am trying to remember. El detalle es que ahora estoy pensando en la palabra que se usa para decir cuando yo tengo mucha hambre, mucho deseo de algo, but I forgot how it is. De verdad que se me olvidó. Y no se las quiero dar equivocada porque pues tampoco es la idea, ¿verdad? Pero bueno, mientras tanto, eh, mientras a lot recuerdo... hungry, teacher. Hola. A lot hungry. No, es que hungry es como que si yo, o sea, solamente tengo hambre, pero creo que es como eager, pero el problema es que no me acuerdo bien, eager, wanting to do ajá, uh -huh. eager, eager sí, eager es, aquí está so yeah, if you have that eager of having something, that is the word that I was trying to say, so when you have an eager for something, or for um, 
someone even you can use you know this this phrase of wish or you can use this structure of wishes all right so now i am going to give you guys the chance to express a wish you may have and see if you have understood how to use this structure because it's very simple the only thing you have to remember is that the main verb or at least the first verb that you use has to be in past but then on you can use you know a regular form um to continue on with um well with the desire or the wish you want to express so let's see we're gonna hear if uh, we can get a wish from maria dolores what would be something that you would say that you wish excuse me teacher un deseo. Vamos a tratar de hablar acerca de un deseo. I wish, I wish, o sea, algo que usted desearía que suceda, algo que usted desearía tener. I wish rest tomorrow oh. every day. Okay, I wish I could rest every day. Very good. So, there you have it. I wish I could rest every day. O sea, desearía poder descansar todos los días. Good, very good. Uh, let's see if let we get an example from Laura. How about you, Laura? What would be a wish you may have? Hello, everyone. Hello. In my case, I have a, a lot of wish, but I, my most important for me is the I wish I traveled around the world, but okay. I don't have a lot of money to travel. But when I have an a opportunity of a trip, Mm -hmm. I I can I I do. You take it. Mm -hmm. All right. I like people like that because yeah, YOLO. You only live once, you know. And and you what you take with you when you pass away is basically only the experiences and the moments, memories that you live. So yeah, staying or, or collecting money um, is not going to be the main thing every day. Like of course, money is important. But if you can, you know, enjoy something, have a new experience, live something better, um, just go for it. So very good. Very, very I nice. Have a, I have a question. Mm -hmm. For example, I say I wish a sound to play it. Is correct to say that? I wish, sorry? I wish I saw to play it. Is, is possible to use two verb in past uh, when I have a, a wish? I wish I saw mm -hmm. to play. Uh, ¿Qué queremos decir en español? Ah, en español, que quisiera decir eh, como deseo, me gustaría ver jugar a un jugador X, ¿verdad? Ah. Entonces, pero no sé si es posible, como en español, eh, perdón, en, en el presente decimos este, sí, to play. Ajá. Sería... En, en pasado, no sé si eso es posible. Sería eh, con participio, porque como ya nos movimos hacia el pasado, o sea, ya con este verbo del so, nos movimos hacia el pasado, ahora sería en participio. Entonces sería, por ejemplo, I wish I saw Pelé playing. Sí, sería playing. Entonces sería de esta forma. I wish I saw, y el nombre de la persona, en ese caso sí, o sea, estamos hablando de un jugador, ¿verdad? Sería así. I wish I saw Pelé playing. Si ustedes tienen el deseo de ver, qué sé yo, Um, a Selena, sí. I wish I saw Selena. En este caso no sería playing, sino que sería performing. Sí. I wish I saw Selena performing. So that's, you know, like a desire. Uh, it's in the past con el saw, porque estamos hablando acerca del pasado, pero luego lo ponemos en participio porque sería algo que estaría sucediendo en el pasado. Entonces, eh, por eso utilizamos ambas, ambas estructuras o ambos tiempos, ¿verdad? Sería el pasado simple y el participio. Sí. Cuando hablamos de participio, simplemente se refiere a que en ese momento que estamos nosotros, estará sucediendo aquella actividad. Así que así sería. I wish I saw Selena playing, sorry, performing, or I wish I saw, y pues ponemos el nombre del jugador X, eh, playing. Sí, por ejemplo, I wish I saw um, Jordan, let's say, Jordan playing. Y aquí le vamos a agregar algo que sería como un deseo for the heat. Sí. Entonces, se sería ver a Jordan jugar para los heat. Entonces, eh, eso, así sería. Ahora, 
Y ahí es donde entra el caso del de, eh, tema que vamos a estar revisando muy probablemente, creo que ya el lunes, ya no va a haber tiempo hoy, eh, acerca de el, um, ¿cómo se llama? El pasado, el presente perfecto, perdón, el presente perfecto. Porque cuando utilizamos el presente perfecto también podemos utilizar wish, pero sería algo así como I wish I had seen, en ese caso es como eh, desear haber hecho algo. Sí, porque eh, el presente perfecto, como spoiler, lo principal de lo que trata es que nos habla acerca de acciones completas, o sea, cosas que ya se hicieron por completo. Entonces, sería algo así, ¿verdad? I wish I had seen. No sería eh, I wish I saw, sino que I wish I had seen, o I wish I have seen. Um, pero eso vamos a verlo más a fondo el lunes, eh, pero... Por ahora, ¿verdad? Hablando acerca de esto, acerca de como la forma más básica, sería así. I wish I saw Jordan playing, or I wish I saw anyone. Um, si solo lo quieren ver jugando, pues sería playing. Si lo quieren ver haciendo cualquier cosa, ustedes utilizan pues el verbo que corresponde, ¿verdad? A esa actividad. Y luego, pues si necesitan un complemento eh, o hablar acerca de un lugar, por, de, por decir algo, eh, podríamos decir algo así como I'm Miami. Casi no se nota que quiero que vaya a los hits, I wish I saw Jordan playing in Miami. No sé ni por qué se me ocurrió en Miami también. Ok, so in Miami. Good. Así sería más o menos eh, la forma en la que lo utilizaríamos. Muy bien, vamos a ver. ¿Alguien más con un deseo? Um, Romeo, how about you? What is a wish you have? Oh, you're, you're still on mute. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Perfect. I wish I had my own house. All right. I wish I had my own. Oh, my own home. All right. Very good. I wish I had my own home. Great. Very good. Uh, let's see. How about the case of um, Linda? What is a wish you have, Linda Lopez? <laughs> I wish I I wish I finally finally the university. Okay, I wish I finished the university. Aquí es uno de esos casos en los que suena mejor si utilizamos el que les estaba diciendo, el presente perfecto, porque Sería así, I wish I had finished the university. Sí, el deseo sería, eh, desearía haber terminado la universidad. El caso es que estamos hablando acerca de algo, acerca del pasado también, ¿verdad? Normalmente con los wishes, como el caso este aquí de I wish I had my own home, es algo que quisiéramos tener en el presente. O sea, en este momento yo quisiera tener esto. Así que por eso solo tenemos que eh, ir atrás una capa, por decir así. O sea, solo un tiempo en el pasado. En cambio, cuando estamos hablando acerca de algo que yo quisiera, que ya hubiese terminado, algo que ya hubiese pasado, entonces ahí utilizo casi que dos capas acerca del pasado. Una que es para el deseo y otra que es para hablar acerca de esa actividad que ya debería haber terminado. Entonces, por eso diríamos, I wish I had finished the university. No solo sería, I wish I finished porque si yo digo, I wish I finished the university, significa desearía terminar la universidad. Sí, es como un deseo a futuro, desearía terminar la universidad, desearía es como tener la oportunidad de terminar la universidad. En cambio, si yo digo, I wish I had finished the university, significa que desearía ya haber terminado la universidad. Entonces, esa palabrita, ¿verdad?, marca esa diferencia entre terminar a futuro y haber terminado ya la universidad. Muy bien, entonces ahí se, nos podemos quedar con cualquiera de las dos, pero eh, decidí lo del had por lo que usted dijo, ¿verdad? Que quisiera haber ya terminado la U, so, yeah. All right, uh, next one up, we're going to hear from Mariela. What is a wish you may express, Mariela? I wish I studied language. Okay, yes. I studied languages, yes. I studied languages, great, very good. Um, yeah, I wish I studied languages. Desearía estudiar lenguas. Very nice. Very, very good. Um, ahora, 
algunos otros wishes, algunos otros deseos se pueden hacer así, miren. I wish to study, en este caso también en presente. I wish to study languages. Este es más como una aspiración o también se utiliza más como eh, en el momento en el que ustedes están teniendo que hacer una decisión. Sí, o sea, si ustedes están, por ejemplo, eh, inscribiéndose en la universidad y les preguntan, ¿verdad? Que si, o sea, ¿qué carrera van a tomar? Porque tal vez sea algo que, o sea, eso la persona que les hace la inscripción no sabe, no tiene la certeza de que es lo que ustedes han decidido. Entonces, en el presente, o sea, en ese momento, ahí directamente, ustedes pueden utilizar esta estructura también. I wish to study languages. O sea, este es como mi deseo. Deseo estudiar lenguas. Sí. Um, diferente, o sea, como si yo digo, I wish I study languages, esto es como poniéndome a mí como un objeto, ¿verdad? Es como eh, un deseo que yo tengo para mí mismo. Entonces, eh, la mayoría de estos deseos que tenemos aquí regulares son hacia esa idea, ¿verdad? El, el deseo de que yo me quisiera ver a mí estudiando, el, que, el deseo de que quisiera ver a alguien más quizás haciendo algo. Entonces, eh, son deseos donde ponemos ese deseo como un objeto, no necesariamente como algo principal. O sea, eso la, como les digo, como un comentario, simplemente mencionar algo que desearía tener. En cambio, cuando utilizamos Wish en presente, es más que todo cuando tenemos eh, opciones en las cuales podemos elegir. Like, if, for example, someone goes to a burger store, ¿sí? Un compañero, amigo va, ¿verdad?, a comprar hamburguesas. Entonces, si les pregunta, What, which one do you want? Si ustedes quieren utilizar wish en ese caso, solamente pueden decir, ¿verdad? I wish, um, I wish you bring me a baconator. Sí, por decir algo, hablando así de Wendy's. So, yeah, I wish you bring me a baconator. Entonces, es un deseo presente. Es algo que ustedes pueden elegir dentro de diferentes opciones. Um, y por eso, en ese, en ese momento, se puede utilizar así en el presente. Pero si yo estoy hablando acerca de deseos, por ejemplo, nadie está yendo a comprar eh, a, a ningún lugar, estamos todos en la casa, pero yo tengo ese eager, ese, ese craving, era eso, era la palabra que estaba buscando yo desde a ratos, sí, craving, porque es que eager es como con todo, pero craving es con comida, vamos a ver, ya, yeah. so I think, ajá, craving, ahorita se las voy a mandar la palabra, para que la tengan ahí también, Así, miren, sin estar pensando, se me vino a la mente. So, craving. You have that craving for, for a burger or a craving for, I don't know, for a pizza, something like that. Um, you can request it. For, I mean, you, you can only mention it as a desire. Ustedes dicen, ¿verdad? I wish I had a burger right now. Entonces, eso simplemente es hablando acerca del deseo. No hay opción en este momento que alguien esté eh, preguntándoles a ustedes qué tipo de hamburguesa quisieran, cuál hamburguesa querés, sino que es simplemente ese deseo que se nos vino a la mente, ese craving que tuvimos. Entonces, eh, en ese caso, ¿verdad? Se utilizará con el pasado. No se va a decir en presente. En presente se usa cuando ya las opciones están sobre la mesa y ustedes lo único que tienen que hacer es elegir directamente cuál de las diferentes opciones les parece mejor. Bueno, vamos a ver. Otro par de ejemplos. Um, how about the case of uh, Ruth? What is a desire you may have, a wish you may have? Uh, I wish I didn't suffer from anxiety. anxiety. Okay. Uh, there we go. I wish I didn't suffer from anxiety. You know, a friend once told me that in the world, I know it's not going to help anything, but in the world, everyone has something related to it. Like, we all have anxiety. The only thing is that some of us just don't realize to what level. But yeah, as humans, I, I feel like, you know, there are always things that worry us. And those things are, of course, tricky. And um, yeah, I mean... The thing that I want to say is that you're not alone. Like if you if you um sometimes have you know these anxiety attacks, I totally understand how it feels. It has happened to me, but um yeah, just just think like that. You know, you're not alone. Probably no one is going to understand completely what you're going through or what you're feeling. 
but they might have an idea and uh, people might be there, you know, for you when you feel like that. So just keep it up. Keep it up, warrior. <laughs> Thanks. All right. So, yeah, good. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, moving on, we are going to hear from, let me see. Maria Dolores, ya le pregunté. Sara, how about you, Sara? What would be a desire you may have or a wish you may express? Um, I wish I had a car. All right. I wish I had a car. Very <laughs> good. So do I. Same desire. I can totally relate to that. To that. So good. Very good. Um, in my case, I will have to add this, for example. I wish I had a car of my own because I do have one. I do have one that I use basically on a daily basis, but it's not mine. It's a, actually my dad's. So, you know, it's not like I can say my car. So, yeah. All right. Next one up. Uh, Alexa, how about you? What is a wish you may have? Well, I wish my birthday wasn't during the holiday. All right, uh, my birthday was uh, during the holidays. And when is your birthday? Well, actually, my birthday is in October, but this is something that actually I think. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. So that it's basically something that my sister can relate to because her birthday is on April 17th. And uh, she is very used to having her birthday during the holidays. Because it happens, I feel like you also can relate to that. It happens almost every year. Like you guys have that advantage that you can get to celebrate your birthday um, regardless, you know, of, of how everything is going. Because normally you have that advantage of um, being or having your birthday in during the holidays. But this year, sadly, it was not the case. Um, hablando de eso. Ahora que, que mencionamos eso, quiero comentarles acerca de una situación que va a ser un poquito diferente, ¿verdad? Esta, en esta ocasión. Creo que ustedes ya están al tanto, pero por si no lo estaban, así también ya asegurarme de que pues la mayoría de ustedes conoce sobre el tema. Eh, la situación es que para este curso vamos a tener la vacación, ¿verdad? De Semana Santa en el medio. Entonces, la próxima semana... Eh, estaríamos trabajando con normalidad, pero después de esa semana, pues es cuando ya se viene, ¿verdad? La Semana Santa, entonces, y en esos días no vamos a tener clase, sino que el curso se reanudaría hasta la siguiente semana. Así que, eh, para que lo tomen en cuenta, así no se me vayan a confundir y más adelante, ¿verdad? Estén esperando clase en días en los que no va a haber y pues también para que sepan, ¿verdad? Que si tienen planes para Semana Santa, pues no van a tener que preocuparse de venir a, a escuchar eh, clase durante esos días, sino que pues son libres, ¿verdad? De, de poder seguir adelante con cualquier plan, con cualquier um, deseo que tengan. En caso, sí, que, que alguno de ustedes estuviese preocupado pensando, ay, no, voy a tener que dejar que mi familia se vaya sin mí porque las clases son más importantes que cualquier ida a la playa. Entonces, ajá, ya ahora ya no tienen que pensar eso. Eh, ya tienen libertad, ¿verdad? Libertad creativa y pueden ir a la playa sin problema. Ok, so, uh, we're going to get one more. Sí, uno más, un deseo más y luego pasamos a lo de la lectura que les estaba comentando. So that one is going to come from, let me see, um, Luis, how about you? What is a wish or desire you may have? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Um, I wish to go to a Shakira concert. Ok, I wish I went, sería en este caso. I went, uh -huh. ok. I wish I went to a Shakira concert. All right, very good. Will you ask her for Pique? <laughs> I, I, I will assume not. <laughs> I will assume not. But very good. Sounds nice. Sounds very, very good. All right. Um... Now that you mentioned that, if I was ever to pick up a, a concert to go to, I think something that I wish I could do, a part, of course, of going to Tomorrowland, will be I wish I went to an ACDC concert. I don't know why I just feel like I would like to be in an ACDC concert or maybe a Guns N' Roses concert. Either of those will be a great option um, for me. But um, all right, moving on. 
We have these two readings. Yo sé que esto se ve como mucho. Tenemos dos diferentes lecturas. Eh, a ver, no espero que hagamos esto al 100%, um, ¿verdad? Correcto, digamos. Pero la idea detrás de esta actividad que vamos a estar practicando ahorita en los últimos 10, 10 12 minutos, es que tratemos de leer um, con naturalidad. O sea, tratar de hacerlo lo mejor que podamos, claro, pero no preocuparnos tanto por los errores que vayamos a cometer. Ok, yo quiero que si, si se equivocan, sigan adelante. ¿Por qué? La idea es más que todo generar un poco de confianza. Yo sé que es bastante, se ve como bastante, pero a la hora de la hora lo importante es eh, que tengamos un momento, ¿verdad? Para practicar. Ahora, cosa importante es que ahorita no los voy a estar llamando. Con estas lecturas no los voy a llamar necesariamente, sino que les voy a dar la oportunidad que ustedes decidan eh, quién va a ser el participante que va a leer, ¿ok? Entonces, eh, la, lo, lo principal es eso, simplemente leer, o sea, y pues poder eh, básicamente estar, ¿verdad?, frente a los demás compañeros y realizando nuestra lectura. Así que, antes que nos metamos a leer directamente, yo les voy a ayudar con hacer la lectura, el ejemplo de cómo sería, ¿verdad?, lo esperado. Eh, Okay, so here we have Mary Curie. Mary Curie was one of the most accomplished scientists in history. Together with her husband, Pierre, she discovered radium, an element widely used for treating cancer, and studied uranium and other radioactive substances. Pierre and Marie's um, uh, amicable collaboration later helped to unlock the secrets of the atom. Eso no es parte de la lectura. Ok. Mary was born in 1867 in Warsaw, Poland, where her father was a professor of physics. At an early age, she displayed a brilliant mind and a, a blissful personality. Her great exuberance for learning prompted her to continue with her studies after high school. She became disgruntled, however, when she learned that the university in Warsaw was close to women. Determined to receive a higher education, she defiantly left Poland and in 1891 entered the sovereign a French university where she earned a master, her master's degree and doctorate in physics. Okay. Mary was fortunate to have studied at uh, um, the Sorbonne with some of the greatest scientists of her day, one of whom was Pierre Curie. Mary and Pierre were married in 1895 and spent many productive years working together in the physics laboratory. Muy bien. Esa es una de las lecturas. La otra será esta, Mount Vesuvius. Eh, voy a leer ambas de una vez porque así ustedes tienen la opción de elegir cuál de las dos, ¿verdad? Quieren practicar. So, Mount Vesuvius. Mount Vesuvius, a volcano located between the ancient Italian cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, has received much attention because of its frequent and destructive eruptions. The most famous of these eruptions occurred in AD 79. Um, the volcano had been inactive for centuries. There was little warning of the coming eruption, although one account unearthed by archaeologists says that a hard rain and a strong wind had disrupted the celestial calm during the preceding night. Early the next morning, the volcano poured a huge river of molten rock down upon Herculaneum, completely burying the city and filling the harbor with coagulated lava. Meanwhile, on the other side of, mount of the mountain, cinders, stone, and ash rained down on Pompeii. Sparks from the burning ash ignited the combustible um, rooftops quickly. Large portions of the city were destroyed in the conflagration. Fire, however, was not the only cause of destruction. Poisonous sulfuric gases saturated the air. These heavy gases were not buoyant in the atmosphere and therefore sank towards the earth to suffocate people. 
Muy bien. Eh, a ver, ahora quisiera saber quién será el primero de ustedes que tenga el deseo de practicar y cuál será la lectura que gustarían practicar. Ok, Romeo, which one would you like to read? First one yes. or second one? Yes, teacher. I want to read the second one. The second one? On okay, Vesuvius. So, right. So we're going to leave it right here. Okay. Mount uh, Vesuvius, a volcano located between the ancient Italian cities of Pompeii and Herculaneum, has received much attention because of its frequent and destructive eruption. The most famous of this eruption uh, occurred in AD 79. The volcano had been inactive for centuries. There was little warning of the coming eruption, although one account unnerved by archaeologists says that a hard rain and a strong wind had disturbed the cel celestial calm during the preceding night. Early the next morning, the volcano uh, poured poor, mm -hmm. poor, a uh, huge. Huge, huge river of molten rock down upon Herculaneum, completely burying the city and filling the harbor with coag coagulate lava. lava. Mm. Meanwhile, on the on the other side of the mountain, cinders, mm -hmm. stones, and ash rain down on the on Pompeii. Spark from the burning ash in in ignited ignited the combustible roof stuff quickly. Large portion of the city were destroyed and the con conflict, conflict, conflagration fire, however, was not the only, only cause of destruction. Poisonous sulfuric gases saturate the air. These heavy, heavy gases were not buoyant in the atmosphere and Therefore, sank to where the earth and suffocate people. All right, very I good. Try. <laughs> no, you tried it, and that's great. Very good. You did very nice. You know, you didn't stop on, on many occasions, so that sounds very good. It's a get a, a great advance for me. So very good. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Jim. Who would like to be next? Who would like to try it uh, next? And which one would you guys like to read? Miren, para que se motiven más, a mí siempre me gusta hacer esto. Esto es algo, es una propuesta que les tengo más que todo para el final, ¿verdad? De, del curso, ¿sí? Eh, a ver. Mm, let me think. Sí, es que tres es suficiente. A ver, vamos a ver. Para el final, para la última clase que vamos a tener, vamos a tener una lectura similar. La invitación es a que ustedes vayan y practiquen con diferentes lecturas, ¿sí? Pero esa lectura que hagamos ese día, eh, voy a estar con el, con el teléfono midiendo quién la hace más rápido. Espero que tengamos chance todos. La persona que la haga más rápido se gana una recarga, no importa, o sea, lo que sea, ¿sí? de, de, o sea, paquete o recarga normal, máximo de tres dólares. ¿sí? Eso pues para que sea un, un pequeño incentivo. Claro, también el hecho de estar leyendo, ¿verdad? Entonces, ese día sería una, una lectura qué sé yo, para que tengamos todos la oportunidad, sí, tres párrafos cortos, creo que serían suficientes. Entonces, eh, para que le vayamos perdiendo el miedo a esto de leer, o sea, leer en el idioma objetivo es algo que deberíamos practicar básicamente todos los días, porque de esa forma vamos a estar obteniendo mejor, una mejor fluidez. El punto es que, por ejemplo, cuando estamos leyendo, ya tenemos eh, allí frente a nosotros, ¿verdad?, qué es lo que tenemos que decir. Todo lo que nos debe preocupar es un poco la pronunciación y el ritmo que vamos a llevar. 
Pero, por ejemplo, cuando estamos hablando, tenemos que hacer el proceso, ¿verdad? De, de pensar. Eh, si pensamos en el idioma objetivo, pues pensar qué vamos a decir. Y si hacemos el proceso de traducción, que normalmente sucede con los bilingües, hacer ese proceso de, de traducción. Entonces, eh, cuando estamos hablando, es mucho más complejo. En cambio, en la lectura, ya tenemos una guía, ¿verdad? ¿Qué es lo que deberemos eh, estar diciendo? Así que les invito a que traten de practicar, a que tomen un momento, un ratito de sus días, agarren, qué sé yo, el tema que a ustedes les guste, googleenlo y traten de leer, ¿verdad? Dos, tres párrafos con ese tema y van a ver que, o sea, la lectura va a ir mejorando, ¿sí? Va a mejorar y pues, ¿quién sabe? Tal vez se ganen una recarga y no es mentira, ¿sí? O sea, yo siempre trato de pagarles con, con, con eso. Um, depende cuál sea el tema, depende qué sea lo, lo... Siempre en la última clase yo regalo un par de, de dólares así en, en recarga. Así que eh, piénsenlo, eh, ahí está la invitación. Pero antes de llegar a eso, ¿quién quiere seguir practicando ahorita? Ya con el incentivo. ¿Quién I quiere? Want okay. To try. All right. So we have Alexa. She raised Aww. her hand. So, um, which one would you like to do, Alexa? The first one or the second one? The first one. Okay. Okay. So Mary Curry. There you go. Mary Curry was. One of the most accomplished scientists in history, together with her husband Peter, she discovered radium, an element widely used for treating cancer, and studied uranium and other radioactive substances. Peter and Mary, the unstable collaboration leader, helped to unlock the secret of the alien. Mary was born in 1877 in Warsaw, Poland, where her father was a professor of physics. And at an early age, she displayed a brilliant mind and this beauty personality. Her great uh, tolerance for women prompted her to continue with her studies. After high school, she became the problem, however, when she learned that the university in Warsaw was close to women who determined to receive a higher education, she recently left Poland and in 1891 entered to Sorbo, a French university where she had I think she had a problem with the internet. Let's see, uh, or is it me? Alexa, are you there? Oh, okay, no problem then. All right, so Laura, you wanted to give it a try, so you can have it now. Tell me, which mm -hmm. one would you like to read? The first one or uh, the second the, the volcano. Okay, good. Here you go. Okay, Laura, okay. when you're ready, you may start. Uh, I try to do. Mountain volcanoes, uh, sorry, Mount Vesuvius, a volcano located between the ancient Italian cities of Pompeii and Herculanum, has received much attention because of its frequent and destructive eruption. The most famous of the eruption of current in AD 79, the volcano has been inactive for centuries. There was a little warning of the coming eruption, although one account un unearthed by archaeologists say that a hard rain and a strong white had destroyed the celestial calm during the preceding night. Early the next morning, the volcano poured a huge river of molten broke down upon Herculeneum, completed by burying the city and falling the harbor with, I don't know. Coagulated. Coagulated lava. Meanwhile, on the other side of the mountain, cedars, stone, and ash, and ash shined down on Pompeii. Spark from the burning ash ignited the combustible roof root of quickly large portoin portoin of the city were destroyed 
in the conflagration. Fire, however, was not the only cause of destruction. Poisonous, mm -hmm. sulfuric gas saturate the air. air. These having gases were not violent in the atmosphere and their form sank toward the air and uh, suffocate people. Very good. You did very, very nice. All right. You see? O sea, se puede. Con, con un poquito de, de, de ganas y práctica, ¿verdad? Se puede. You did very good, actually. Very, very nice. Muy bien. Buen trabajo. Uh, bueno, los que se han medido ahora, ¿verdad? La lectura. Eh, más adelante vamos a tener otros chances, o sea, no significa que es el único, a mí me gusta mucho apoyar el hecho de que tratemos de, de, de darle la importancia que se merece, ¿verdad? O sea, de las cuatro macro habilidades que se tienen en los idiomas, eh, creo que la lectura es la que más a menudo se abandona por parte de los docentes y pues yo considero que es muy importante, más que todo en el proceso de aprendizaje de un idioma nuevo, o sea, siempre nosotros tenemos que tratar de exponernos a él y al vocabulario que lo compone. Entonces, es cierto que a veces algunas de estas palabras no las vamos a utilizar nosotros en nuestro día a día, ¿verdad? Porque ahorita todavía no saben ustedes qué significa unearthed, no saben quizás qué significa conflagrated, um, pero son cosas que, um, o sea, que, van a, que van a funcionar en algún punto y que ya ustedes las van a conocer. Entonces, por eso es importante, ¿verdad? El, el llevar a cabo algo de lectura. Pero bueno, por ahora finalizamos nuestra segunda semana. So all I have to do, guys, is basically just wish you guys a great weekend. Um, let's hope we meet again on Monday. And uh, yeah, for now, just thank you very much for your attention and participation in tonight's class. I hope I'll see you Monday and uh, have a good weekend. So bye-bye. Bye. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.